Happy Tuesday, everybody. We are going to go ahead and get started here. Hi, Jesse. Hey, Dave. Get my my hair ready. You're looking good. Yeah. Got, good. got some crazy hair. Yeah. So uh, it's Tuesday. Um, we're going to talk about Falcons today. Um, for those of you that might not have joined us before, welcome. This is a six seminar series um, about migration and um, ID of migrating raptors. And so we are on number four of our six um, six part journey. Um, the other three um, webinars in the series so far are up on the Hawkwatch YouTube channel. So I think maybe uh, maybe Nicole can post that in the, um, the chat. And if not, you can just go to our website, which is on the the blue link right there on the on the slide here, www.hawkwatch.org. Uh, and you can link to the YouTube channel and see those if you're interested in, in seeing uh, us talk about some of the other groups that we've already covered. Um, today is Falcons. Um, if you are new to Hawkwatch, we're a nonprofit based in Salt Lake City. Um, we do research and education and long-term monitoring focused on raptors as indicators of ecosystem health. Uh, and um, we thank you for joining us today. I'm Dave Oliar. I'm the Director of Long-Term Monitoring and Community Science at Hawkwatch, and I'm joined by Jesse Watson, who is a research biologist at Hawkwatch, and we together um, manage our migration network uh, across the West. I'm trying to change slides. And so we're going to talk about falcons today. Um, I really quickly, we, we talk about this in more detail in the um, the first ID session, um, but a good guide is really um, useful. There's a lot of different um, raptor specific guides that are out there today. These are just a few of those um, that we find to be pretty handy. And um, the you know the, the newest thing is being able to take your guide with you in your in your pocket. And so there's a Raptor ID app uh, available for Apple and Android users. And here's the information. It's a free app. You can download it. It's got um, all of North American's diurnal raptors with images, with species account and, and text describing um, key points, a lot of which we'll, we'll point out today. Uh, it's got images, some of those images you'll see in the slides today, and it's got narrated video um, telling you what um, Jerry Ligori sees when he's watching these birds in flight. And we'll, we'll show actually some of those videos today too. Um, anything to add, Jesse? No, I think that covers it, it's free reiterate that every time it's it's pretty handy so if you've got space on your phone uh, it's a good thing to have i go i go to it a lot um when we're talking about iding raptors in flight particularly in migration and we're for most of north america we're in we're in peak right jesse mm -hmm. what's that mean that means the the bulk of the birds are moving right now it's a good time to see migrating raptors Lots. Um, our, our Corpus Christi site counted 85,000 plus birds um, yesterday. So that's that's a lot of a lot of individuals heading to wintering grounds. But when you're looking at raptors um, migrating in flight, uh, it's a lot of the key diagnostics are we're not really looking at like the, the field guide markers that you see in your traditional field guides. Uh, we're looking at other things like shape. So is the bird um, stocky or slim? Are the wings long or short? Are, are the wings broad, meaning not the length out from the body, but like how wide are they, if you want to think about it that way? Um, is the tail long relative to the wings and vice versa? And so when we start talking about shape, those are the kinds of things we're looking at. And so we piece shape together with what, Jesse? Uh, these other characteristics, so shape, flight mannerisms. So once once you get an idea of what they look like in the sky. What do they look like when they're moving? They're moving fast, slow, beating their wings quickly, slowly. Um, how do they move relative to the wind? Is the wind pushing them around? Could be an indication of their size. Um, and then plumage. You want to talk about that, Dave? Yeah, after after shape and, and kind of how birds are, are moving and what, what the environment is doing to them, then those those colorations and those field markings they're they're important. Um, they're not something that you want to ignore. And sometimes you'll see some flash of color or something that will really key you in on making your ID call. But you want to look at shape, behavior, and then think about plumage and those markings. And then also um, think about where you are 
habitat wise and when you are in terms of what time of year it is right and i think the last one will be as it's been in, in our other talks but i think it'll be super relevant today a few of the individuals that will individual species we'll talk about are quite widespread and you can see them pretty much anywhere in north america and in many places south america and central america uh, but other species that we'll talk about are, are strictly I guess restricted to specific regions. So knowing the habitat and the season will really help you come to an ID or at least minimize the group of birds that you could be assigning an ID from. If that makes sense. So keep those things in mind as, as you're going through your ID for not only falcons, which we're going to talk about today, but birds in general. Uh, the first thing we always tell anyone that's that's working on um, becoming better hawk watcher is to focus on groups first and know know your groups before you focus in on the other um, small nuances that we'll, we we talk about. So you need to to you know the first thing you can do when you look at a bird is look and see are the wings short and round and is the tail long and if so that should point you towards the forest hawks or the exhibitors right um, and so we we covered those in our first session. Uh, and last time we talked about the budios. These are the soaring hawks with long, broad wings and short, broad tails for, for soaring, and they're built for, for soaring and pouncing on prey, right? And today's group, Jesse, what, what is it about falcons? The falcons, they have very pointed wings, long tails generally, and they are built for speed, take a lot of prey on the wing. So um, not exclusively, but typically they're eating a lot of aerial birds. Um, so that's again not exclusive. There's there's other rodents and whatnot that that they're opportunistic and will eat, uh, but they're so agile in the air. Uh, they they are pros at moving quickly and catching things on the wing. Um, yeah, that's it for sure. So uh, we're going <laughs> to have our first interactive moment of today's session, right? Um, so some of you, a lot of you may may already be aware of this, but those of you that might not pay much attention to the, the raptor happenings, um, think about falcons. Falcons are a group of raptors. We talk about those a lot. But which group of birds listed here um, are falcons actually most closely related to? And I'm opening a poll now. It's going to be open for a minute, but you'll see a question. And uh, feel free to feel free to take part in the poll. <clears throat> Are they most related to owls, the exhibitors, the parrots, the budios, carriers, who we'll talk about Friday, right? Or kingfishers, another group of birds. And looking at the results right now, it looks like a lot of a lot of uh, folks are leaning towards the exhibitors, with parrots a close second, and harriers running third. And our poll is up. So, thanks for taking part in that. And actually, interestingly enough. Um, not too long ago, hold on, I'm trying to close this. Some genetic work revealed that indeed, actually falcons and, and other members of the, the family falconidae are more closely related. Hold on. To, to the songbirds, the passerines and the parrots, the, the cidaciformes, than they are to the other raptor groups. And so here's a, a quick diagram, and this is just, this is a clay, this is a phylogeny showing the, the branches of the genetic evolutionary tree, like how closely related different groups are. And falcons You can see right here are more closely related to songbirds and, and actually to parrots than they are to um, the exhibitors, the hawks and the exhibitor, forest owls and, and owls and whatnot. And so that's, uh, you know, kind of interesting. And you start to look at, at fal falcons and the way their heads are built and their, their bills and 
and you can kind of really start to see that there is there is some resemblance to to, to parrots in terms of the sturdiness of the bill and and those sort of things. So falcons are kind of parrots of death, if you want to think of it that way. Um, and so that's interesting. And we'll talk about this bird right here on Friday when we're covering some of the other um, raptor raptor groups that don't fall into the big families that we, we talk about right now. What is that bird called, Dave? That is a Seriema. Yeah, at least got to give us that much. There you go. I am trying to turn off the pointer. Oh, maybe I can get it. Yeah, maybe you can take control there. Maybe. Got it. All right. Thanks. So we've got another poll here. Yep, we got one more quick quiz. So this is this is the idea here is like let's see what you know about falcons before we talk about falcons, and then we'll we'll, we'll do this again at the end. So, real quick, two minutes to take a look at these falcons in flight. And, and tell us what you think panel one is, panel two, panel three, and panel four, looking at things like shape. They're not moving, so you can't really see behavior, but you can see shape and you can see some field markings in these guys. I didn't know you signed up for a quiz when you signed up for this webinar today. And like Jesse mentioned, you know, for the group, again, thinking of those characteristics of the groups, we're talking about falcons today. Most of these birds have pretty long wings, pretty long tails, and the tips of their wings out towards the end are all pointed, and they're pointed to varying degrees, but they long pointed wings, long tails built for speed. Yeah, if you think about like a, like a stealth, fighting jet they're kind of modeled after uh probably most similar to peregrine shape i guess long or, or pointed sharp wings and they can really move fast and maneuver well it's kind of the prototype i think for sure how much time left dave 20 seconds and we're gonna we're gonna shut this and I'm gonna close this poll here. I'm gonna give everybody a, a warning actually. 20 second warning. And then we'll start talking about characteristics to look at to, to make these ID calls and groups doing pretty good so far. Great. We're not gonna reveal these species until the end. Because you'll see this quiz again, and you have you'll have the opportunity to change your. your you'll idea. either be really happy with what you chose, or you'll be informed and want to change your opinion, or completely confused. <laughs> Hopefully not. All right, we're going to move on. Can you advance the slide, please, Jesse? Yep. All right. All right. So here are the falcon species that we're going to talk about, and, and as we mentioned with the um the, the phylogenetic um map there falcons are raptors they're in the falconiformes they're in the falconidae family um and most of the, the species we're going to talk today about today are in falco the genus um the crested caracara is in a different species or genus and we'll talk about that later pointed wings um, built for speed let's go to our first species jesse mm -hmm. This is a peregrine falcon here in this image, in case you didn't know. But our first species is going to be the American kestrel. Um, and actually, if you have that raptor ID app, I, I think it was just random, but I noticed that the order that we're going in today is exactly the order that they are in the raptor ID app. So that's convenient. Uh, the American kestrel is very widespread. There's multiple subspecies act actually across northern and southern hemisphere north america and south america central america and they can really be seen at pretty much any hawk watch across north america and so good chance that even if you aren't an avid bird watcher you've probably seen an american kestrel at some point so very widespread and they're very recognizable as we'll get into so we'll start off with a video 
What do you see here, Dave? So I watched this bird in flight, and we may go through this twice, <laughs> but I'm looking at wing shape, and I'm, I'm definitely seeing what looks like long pointed wings, I'm seeing a long tail. Um, hopefully that gets us to falcons, right? It just went dark. Put it in here. Okay. And the, and the way the light's hitting this bird, you actually, in just a second, we'll get a flash, and you can see like the double black and white mustache facial markings on this bird, and that's yeah. If you look closely there, you there can go. you can see it. That's that's pretty. That's distinct among the amongst the falcons having that that double pattern, right? So if you if you get that look pretty quickly, that sh that that tells us we're looking at a kestrel, American kestrel. Um, Long wings, kind of buoyant. Can we, you want to start the video again, if, unless you've got something to add here, Jesse? No, nope. yeah, they're super, super buoyant in flight. Um, hard to always get a feel for what the wind is doing with these birds, but it can push them up and down pretty easily because they're just they're small. You know, they're 100 to 150 grams or so, so relatively small, like a like a robin size almost. And maybe play that one more time. Sure. And if you see the the wing beats, they're they're fast. And they're actually sweeping back, right? Like the bird's almost doing the butterfly stroke, swimming. Um, and the, the the other impression, um, and this will be a nice comparison to some of the other falcons, is like when a kestrel's flapping, it looks like it's doing a whole lot of work to cover not a whole lot of ground. Mm -hmm. right? um, sort of not a powerful, impactful, effective um, wing flap, but a whole lot of wing flapping um, and, and kind of a fluttery overall feel when you see a kestrel moving. Yeah, one thing I'll add, I don't, I don't think we added a video of them soaring, but they do soar, um, and they, they rise quickly, of course, because they're, they're light, and any, any wind or hot air that's rising up will bring them up quickly. Um, they soar in pretty tight circles, which is probably because they're so small, their turning radius is just is tight, and when they glide and soar, they're kind of on flat or drooped wings. And that'll be relevant when we compare some of the other birds. And a droop meaning like the, the outer tips of the wings kind of point down a little bit, right? Hang down. Yeah, like versus that. straight across. Yep. And and so um, this this is our smallest North American fa uh, falcon. And like Jesse said, it, it's in with that map. It's really pretty widespread. So most of you have probably seen these birds, whether you've noticed it or not. And that hovering. Um, behavior that Jesse mentioned, like they are hover hunters. They will just stop in the median on a highway or in a grassy field and just flap and hover and, and sit still as they are looking for um, prey down on the ground to, to go down and try to catch. And so they, this is probably, if you've seen a little bird sitting still as you're driving somewhere, odd, odds are um, you're looking at an American kestrel, right? Uh, there's there's a unique feature amongst kestrels compared to some of the other falcons that we can see here. What's that, Jesse? They are sexually dimorphic by plumage, simply meaning that the males and females in all ages look different than each other, which you think about all the raptor species in North America, um, particularly the diurnal raptors, that's, that's definitely unique. Uh, the northern harriers, the other one that's fairly obvious, and that's a little more convoluted just because adults look differently, adult females yeah. look differently. Yeah. Man, we just opened another poll here, right? So let's see, everyone's got a 50-50 chance on each one of these birds um, in terms of is, is the upper bird, are we looking at a female on top or a male and, and vice versa? And we'll point out what those key plumage characteristics are here in just a second. We'll, we'll keep this poll open for probably another 30 seconds or so. Um, another. Another thing about kestrels, we, we talked about habitat to kind of begin the talk, and, and we won't, don't typically dive into, so to speak, I guess it's a good pun today, dive into what they're eating. Um, American kestrels are one of the falcon species in particular that really focuses on a lot of rodent prey. Um, so they, they certainly take birds, sparrows, uh, depending on the habitat, lizards, insects, uh, but they also eat a lot of, get a lot of their biomass from small mammals, which is fairly unique among these guys. Definitely. All right, I'm going to close this poll and we'll talk about <clears throat> these characteristics that we that we use to um, sex kestrels by plumage, Jesse, right? So uh, yep. let's start with the, the upper bird. What do we see there? Uh, we see kind of a uh, overall the same 
color tone, kind of an orangish red, uh, barring all the way across from the pretty much the bottom of the neck all the way through the wings all the way down to the tail, kind of the same color throughout. Versus the bird on the bottom, which what do you see there? So you look at the, the bird, and this is top side of this bird, the, the, the end of the tail, the subterminal tail band that's right right at the end there, you can see that it, it's a black band. Um, and the other thing that, that stands out on this bird is the, the, sh the shoulders um, are this slaty gunmetal gray, gunmetal blue battleship gray, right? And so that is a characteristic of males. So the bottom bird is a male, and the top bird is, is a female. And it looks like 60% um, on both, 60% of you got the answers right on both of those. So good, good work on, on knowing your kestrel characteristics. Yeah, so just point this out again. This is kind of the, the grayish blue on the male's wings, which sets it apart again at all ages from the female, which is here. Um, so the, this color on the back is probably the two things that you could, you could uh, confuse the easiest, especially if the bird is perched. If you only for some reason saw that portion of the back, you might, you might confuse it. We'll see some underside shots and the breast looks different as well, but then the male just doesn't have really any markings on the tail um, with some exceptions, of course, but generally it's always just this kind of chestnut consistent color and then a thick single black subterminal band. Yeah, and then the other, I guess the other thing to maybe point out and you see this the silhouette um, in the upper right hand slide there is that long pointed slender wings kind of a, a more curvy and not very angular and that's going to become more important when we <clears> add <throat> our, next, our next species right mm -hmm. um, but then how would you describe that like the shape of that the tail in that silhouette i mean it's very long and thin kind of looks squared off here not that that's the best thing to use but but it is relevant when we start talking about a tapered tail and the other species that we're looking at um, is that what you're getting at? Yeah, and, it, and it's overall, it's it's slender. And it, amongst all all the falcons we're going to talk about today, Kestrel is the the slender, buoyant, kind of um, curvy one, I guess. More, more than yeah, and, and I'll just point that out that the tail doesn't taper. And again, as we look at the other species, you'll kind of see what we're looking at there if you get an over or an underside look looking up at the bird. The other thing I guess that's worth pointing out, I'll have the pointer is the the better look at the markings on the face, kind of the double double lines there, the black lines, one in front of the eye, one behind the eye, both on the male and female. Um, so that's that's there are malar stripes on the other falcons, but this double stripe is is unique to this species. So here's a look at a female from the underside. Um, <clears throat> kind of the same color tone again, this rusty orangish color from underneath. Notice how streaky the breast is, that'll that'll differ from the male. Um, and the bands in the tail, the tail is banded in the subterminal band, get the pointer. There is a subterminal band, that's this last black band. Uh, it can vary in thickness, which, is very difficult to see in flight unless you get an image like this. Um, generally, it's it's often a little thicker than the subsequent bands, but we won't really go into that. But the point is that there's numerous black bands along this tail, which again, when we see the males, going to be completely different. What else do you want to add there, Dave? I think that's that's pretty good. Let's move on to the next slide here. What about the trailing edge? I guess we'll. We'll see yeah, you want to say something about that? Yeah, so keep an eye on, when we're talking about the trailing edge, this is the trailing edge of the wings. And notice these little windows here. You can kind of see it looks like a little circle on each end of each flight feather here. On a female, it's a little tougher to see, and it's kind of a brownish, again, rusty hue if you're seeing it with sun shining through from, from this angle. So it's not quite as apparent as it's going to be on the male. And on the male, we, we often will use the term a string of pearls. You can imagine why, because it looks like a white string that you can see here in this image. So there's like a string of pearls. 
So the female does have it. It's just not as apparent because on the male, those windows look white. And that, that really shows up on males, even if they're up high and it's almost just a silhouette. A, a lot of times you can still see that string of pearls on males from pretty far away. Yeah, you can see it in the silhouette up in the right corner too. What else on this male, Dave? The, the underside of a male, you can see it's got the, the thick black tail band, mostly clean orange for the rest of the tail, as you can see there. Um, the breast is, is mostly orange and different individuals will have different degrees of the little um, scallops on, on the side of the breast there, those, those black marks there on the, the left side of the screen that you can see. There's some variation there, but um, females won't have those, those markings. Yeah, and again, this is a little more detailed than we're going to get into for the most part, but the the breast is pretty lightly marked. There's no streaks and there's no spotting all the way up near the neck. Um, so this, this bird is an adult, um, but that again gets tricky and, and very difficult when you just get a glimpse of a bird flying over. Main thing to look for is that tail band, um, that string of pearls to get it identified as a kestrel. And then from there, yeah, is it a male or female? I guess one, one other quick thing to add that we won't focus on, but people don't usually get a chance to appreciate unless they see a lot of pictures or handle a lot of kestrels, which we do for some kestrel research that we do. But these the <clears throat> markings on the outer tail feathers, you can just see some some white and black um, barring on, on this bird. But um, some individuals are incredibly varied in, in terms of the, the amount of, of markings and the patterns that they have on those those outer tail feathers. Yeah, so we're talking about this last it's number six, retro C number six on both sides. Um, sometimes actually the fifth one on, on each side will also be heavily marked. But if you if you Google like American Kestrel tail feathers male, you'll notice this outside feather is a lot different. In fact, the first time I think I handled a Kestrel, I thought I thought it was some unique thing with that bird, like that individual, like, oh man, this tail is messed up. And then I realized, oh no, all male American Kestrel's tails or like this. So pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Go ahead, Dave. So our, our next falcon, and we're kind of scaling up size-wise, at least to start. We'll <clears throat> go back to smaller birds later. Um, but the, the next falcon size up that we have is the, the Merlin. And you can see Merlin um, distribution here. Um, they breed mostly towards the northern part of, of North America, up into Canada, and there's a few breeding populations in some of the cities um, in the north, the Seattle, um, Minneapolis, Wisconsin, kind of up there. Um, but then they, they are en route right now, or will be soon, um, to the non-breeding ground. And you can see that um, during the, the, you know, the winter, um, Merlins are, are much more broadly distributed in the southern portion of, of North America. Um, you, get, you can see them almost anywhere. And so we're going to take a quick look at a Merlin in flight and think about the differences you see from that um, kind of graceful, buoyant, fluttery, flapping Kestrel video that we watched a little while ago. And we'll go through this a second time. I think hopefully it'll play more smoothly. One more time. Yeah. Hopefully it smooths out. Might just be moving too fast to get anything from it. Falcons are fast. This is, yeah. You want to pause it maybe? It's, yeah, it will. A little faulty and Try to get a look with the wings. There's a pretty good look. <clears throat> so if we, if we see shape, I see I see again, you know, long pointed wings. Maybe not as slender as the as the Kestrel. Would you say so? Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. In this image, it, it's a blur. Um. So that's that's normal. If that's that's what you see, but you can still see the shape despite it being a blur. Like this is a realistic look at. Oh man, something dark and fast just flew by. The thing that I see is oh, it's it's dark. It's it looks like it has sharp wings. And if it did fly by, you would you'd be noting how fast it was moving. So right there, you're already building a picture of like, okay, we can rule out a lot of things, and we're leaning towards 
a falcon and it was really dark and moving fast then maybe you have a feeling for size maybe not but yeah then then what do you see there dave and you can kind of see the the if we put it into motion, the next thing I would look at is like, how are those wings moving? Fast. Real fast, <laughs> but not as, <laughs> not as kind of sweeping back and, and, and sort of uh, um, laborious as the Kestrel, right? This bird flaps and it moves. Look at that image right That's there. Good pause right there. And so we see the, the long pointed wings, they're, they're pointed, but they're broader, right? They're stockier and broader than the Kestrel wings. And the other thing that that jumps out to me and, and add something else if you want to talk about anything else here jesse is that like i'm suddenly starting to see some banding on the tail mm -hmm. so i see a white band on the tail i see the bird um you know in motion its wing beats are not that back sweep that seems like it's working really hard to not go very far when this bird flaps it is up and down motion of the, of the wings and it it has a result it picks up speed and it's it's moving like it's late for a meeting right yeah, the, the third bullet down in the Raptor ID app, which I have open, under flight, it says steady, direct, and fast. And I think that pretty much Absolutely. sums up what a Merlin is. Um, so it's kind of nice to actually just move through it slow like this. You can see some of those bands on the tail just flashed a little bit. Up and down beats, steady. Pretty powerful for a small small bird and then the other you know the other thing a lot of hawk watchers will tell you and the guides mentioned too is like if you see a, a small falcon or any falcon and, and it just can't let other raptors in the area be it's got to go harass them um, that's a pretty good characteristic you, you should start to think about it being a merlin too all right so <clears throat> looking at some stills now um there's quite a bit of variation in Merlins, again, like, like they talked about in the geography. Um, there's some, a subspecies of Merlin that's very dark, and then a subspecies of Merlin in the prairies that's very light. And we're not gonna, again, go into the details there. If you are interested in that type of thing, um, I recommend looking up the Raptor, Inhead Raptor ID guide that, that we recently put out. Lots of detailed images looking at the birds in hand, so you can kind of pick that apart. But here's a good look. We've got the silhouette on the top right, um, and another image here with the bird moving across, and you can see that tail banding, which we'll get into, I think, on the next slide. But pretty pale underneath, but different colored, kind of darker than either of the kestrels, male or female. Um, and of course, that tail is black throughout, which is not something you're gonna see in a kestrel. Now, what else do you see here, Dave? Yeah, I think the, the streaking, the shape, the fact that the tail is, is it's long, but it's shorter and more squared off overall than, um, than the other falcons that we'll look at. It's got kind of a, a, a short tail relative to the Kestrel. The Kestrel had a long, thin tail. The tail shape here is, is stockier, shorter, and, and broader. Yeah, and, and the wings are that kind of broad-based wings versus those long slender pointy wings i think that's a pretty good like if you put that kestrel uh, silhouette up against this it would it would look quite a bit different next slide yeah go ahead dave so here's here's another shot of merlin you see that that heavy streaking underneath again for the most part unless it's the the um the prairie subspecies that, that Jesse mentioned, most Merlins, even even the lighter ones, just appear and and are slightly darker based on their their patterning underneath than than a kestrel. So if you're looking at a, a smallish falcon and it starts to look pretty dark, um, that that should be another <clears throat> tip that's going to lead you towards towards Merlin. And here you can see the the heavy streaking. You can see the banding on the tail, black and white. That stands out. That's pretty unique. Uh, the head's different. If you think back to the Kestrel, when we were talking about this, the striping, the two stripes on the face. Um, they do have kind of a faint, depending on the individual, of course, and, and what morph or what subspecies, I should say. Um, you can kind of see a faint marking there below the eye, but it's certainly not, the, it doesn't stand out like it did on the American Kestrels. 
Next slide. Yep. All right. Go ahead. That's, that's Merlin. Um, then we we scale up and we start getting into our big our big falcons, right? So the peregrine falcon, the fastest animal on the planet. Um, you can see its distribution in the Americas here, um, kind of um, pretty widespread, um, but not not like super dense or abundant in a lot of places. We we have a lot of peregrine populations now in urban centers because uh, when um, recovery efforts were taking place, a lot of the the introduction and towers and, and, and reintroduced um, release spots were were in urban centers and peregrines have taken to it well and there's there's quite a good population of urban peregrine falcons um, across um, across the Americas and across the the, the globe nowadays um, but you can see the distribution here it's a broad ranging species and go to the video Jesse yeah don't blink. So this bird's coming towards us. You can see kind of the wings are a little, little bit of a bow to them. So long pointed wings. Hopefully we all get to, to falcon pretty quick and then we got to start looking for some other things. What do we look for? Right let's, again let's watch there. that again. Yep. So maybe l less of a bow, but more of a droop. Um, I'm going to go back right here. You can see a good look at the face almost. Maybe not. Maybe good is not the right word. But right away, you can kind of see there's some dark on the head, but then some white next to it. Yeah, hopefully the other thing that might be jumping out is like that. That's a um, solid large body on, on the bird, right? Compared to the other two species that we've looked at so far. There's a good look right there. Broad chest, long, broad wings. Super powerful when it flaps. Light on the underside. This will be relevant in the next bird that we look at, but the underside of that wing there looks pretty uniform in, in color tone. And we'll see why that's relevant when we look at prairie falcon. Deep, powerful wing beats, kind of whip-like, they just fluid. Look how pointed that wing is. Here's a nice look. It's like the classic look at a peregrine falcon. Wearing Super powerful and steady. Dark, dark hood with really solid malar down the sideburns down the side. Would you make an age call on this bird, Jesse? This is an adult. You can see the barring on the on the breast is tough to see, but. We'll, sh we'll show you in stills here in just a second. All right, that's enough fun with the video. Hopefully that was useful. I think that was the best one so far, quality-wise, from from my office. Good. Go ahead. So here are a couple couple composite views of, of peregrine falcons. Again, you can see the upper left bird, long pointed wings, right. Um, the, the two middle birds here, this, the, the one in the middle and the one lower to the left, you can see the heavy streaking on the breast. Um, that's characteristic of, of young birds, juvenile birds. And then um, adult plumage, the upper left bird and the upper right bird, you can see that you've got the, the, the fine light barring on the body plumage. And it, there's, there's some variation there. You have some really heavy, heavily marked individuals and then some that, that aren't so <clears throat> marked, right, Jesse? Yep. Yeah, and I'm like about to point something out. Yeah, I was gonna say one characteristic that is talked about is at least in the Raptor IDA app is how like in in the silhouette it looks like a re retracted bow and arrow, and I I think that's pretty pretty good descriptor for this this bird in particular. It it really looks just like it's gonna move along and kind of cocked in my mind. Ready to. Ready to dive at speeds of over 200 miles per hour. Yeah, look how look how pointed those wings are uh, relative to the other birds we've we've already looked at. Um, yeah, I think I think that kind of covers it. Yep. Me. Another look. So here's a juvenile. Um, 
look at one thing I'll point out now because it'll be relevant later is look at this. These undertail coverts are barred across. So it's a line across, which again will be relevant when we talk about deer falcons. So keep that in mind. Um, often juvenile falcons, if you get a good look like this, which may not happen, but you catch an image or someone sends you one or you, you do get a good look, maybe it's perched. Often juveniles will have kind of this pale flesh. So the sear, which is right above the, the bill and the feet are kind of a bluish pale white color. And as the birds age, typically that turns into more of a vibrant yellow color. And that's pretty consistent across most of these birds, at least at least the bigger falcons for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and and I'm thinking about kestrels, and it's the same same way with the young bird. Yeah. Um, so that's again really tough to pick up in flight, but just useful tool to kind of have in mind, especially if you see an image. Um, and this young, this is a juvenile. You can see the, the breast is streaked versus kind of the barred look. Um, let me go back. Tough to see, I guess, from this at distance. Um, but you're really streaky on the breast. And that's that's pretty unique for a juvenile. And then these streaky or, or, or bold, I should say, sideburns. Anything else you want to add there, Dave? I think you covered it well. Let's look at an adult. Yeah. So thinking of that streaked versus these guys, you can see how it's different. You see the barring and you can see there's a lot of variation. Like some individuals are pretty heavily barred and some are, are not. Then you can see the bright yellow legs and the fleshy parts that Jesse was talking about. So you can see these two adults here. Kind yeah. Of every, contrasted every, with the, the pale kind of pale bluish. Hue. Yeah. And I, I guess I didn't even say around the eye as well is, is kind of shares the same characteristics as far as the paleness. Oh, pointed wing that even that front bird kind of resembles that 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 bow and arrow shape that you were talking about a minute ago yeah um anything else we want to add these are just really impressive um birds the, the other thing that you can kind of see here and the the tail particularly of the left the front bird um jesse mentioned it earlier on is the the tapering of the tail um, that's towards the end. You can see like the overall shape is a broad tail from the, the base of the body down. But as it goes out, when the tail is folded, as like this bird's is, you can see that it starts to taper or become narrower down towards the end. And you, you wouldn't see that, for instance, if you're looking at a far away Merlin, um, it's it's tail even folded like that's going to be squarish, not tapered. Yeah, and thinking about the Merlin again, the, the size of these birds is obviously different. Remember how, how dark those Merlins appeared? Um, peregrines can be pretty dark, nearly black in their cases, but but generally the vibe is is kind of a lighter lighter bird uh, compared. Good. Yeah, let's talk about our next falcon. Yeah, so speaking of of a lighter bird, we'll, we'll see that here in a couple slides. Yeah, so uh, the the other large falcon that that you're likely to see uh, in, in North America is the, the prairie falcon, uh, particularly in the, the middle, the, the, the central and western portion of North America. Here's the distribution you can see year round. Uh, we don't count a ton of these birds on, on migration, but they do come through and you're likely to see them moving. Uh, they move more um, down in elevation um, than they do in terms of going very far latitude wise or moving south, but you're, you're likely to see them. Uh, they're very light. Let's go ahead and watch uh, watch a video and, and, and sort of compare again the, the shape and the movement and any markings or patterns that you might pick up on this bird compared to the peregrine that we just started talking about. So we'll watch it through once before I pause it. Jesse mentioned the light, right? That's the overall a lot of a lot of white, a lot of just bright. It's a bright bird, minus a couple of points that we'll talk about here in a second. Okay. So what do you see in that profile? So again, I'm getting that pretty heavy body, getting a long pointed wing, right? Um, I'm getting a lot of light. What else? What else? I mentioned this in the peregrine falcon that the difference 
big difference here and a key point for all ages of prey falcon are, are the dark underwing linings and wing pits. And so you can kind of see it there and we'll see it better in the images. So overall light, but with some dark in the, the wing pits, right? Like dark, dark struts between the body. There's a good look at it there. Right there. Sorry, I can't, can't pause it. And that shows up in all ages and, and both sexes, right, Jesse? It does. And I wanted to pause it when you can see the top side very briefly. You can only really see it there, but it's more of a brownish color than, than the birds we've looked at. Certainly could be com there's a good look. Certainly could be confused with a kestrel, particularly a, a female kestrel with that kind of rusty color. Um, but again, larger bird, more powerful. You see the underside, that should be a nice giveaway. And, and of course, looking at the tail banding, um, remembering what we learned about kestrels, there, are, there is some banding in the tails of prairie falcons, but it's very faint and, and it's not gonna be apparent like those other two species. And pretty thick, broad wings here, right? And it's mm -hmm. not the, the curved back motion and, and the bird flapping, it's still, it's uh, more like the peregrine flapping than the kestrel flapping, at least for this this bird we're looking at here. Oops, let me skip ahead. And so here's some nice stills. I was just gonna say, re reiterating, remember, remember your habitat um, for this species. This is kind of the first one that we've, we've talked about where if you're far in the east and someone swears they've seen a, a prairie falcon, you never know. I mean, it's possible these birds can move, but good chance that you can probably rule out a prairie falcon just just based on where the bird's going to exist um but then yeah when you when you get into the details look here you can see the those underwing linings and the wing pits or the axillaries they're called for each of these these individuals shows that really brown wing pit which is a nice characteristic and then the face especially on the bottom one kind of that front profile Everything here besides those wing pits is really bright, just kind of light, light colored. What else do you want to add there? I guess if you, if you got that look below that you're talking about, the, the fact that it's a single mustache there instead of the double would help to, to get you or steer you away from Kestrel if that was if that was still an ID option and you couldn't see the, uh, the dark axillaries that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, very, very similar shape to the peregrine, big falcon with a big body. Um, overall, it, it's a little slimmer than a peregrine. Um, the axillary markings are, are there. Uh, the two kind of, the, the four of the four species we've covered so far, right? A lot, a lot of people will describe the, the prairie falcon and the kestrel as sort of having softer angles and being less angular um, in overall shape than, than the peregrine and the merlin. So here's a look at a younger bird. Um, notice the underside is streaked versus uh, versus kind of spotted, as we'll see. Um, and the dark dark wing linings again is a nice image of it. You can also see the flesh again. Tough to see the foot here, but it's kind of a bluish color. And then the face, there's no bright yellow showing up. And so that's that's again pretty characteristic. If you're watching this bird go by in, in real time in real life though you're you're probably not going to see that streaking right you're not going to see that color that well but you will see those dark pits mm -hmm. of the, the under yeah you, pits. you'll see the overall white kind of vibe with the bird and and then the the dark as the wings go up and there's a nice nice image of a beautiful adult prairie falcon so notice the spotting let me go back flip back and forth so look at that that breast again there's the streaks on the underneath and then here on the underside, spotted. So nice, nice adult yellow flesh. Anything else you want to add there? Yeah, no, you, you pointed out the, the yellows here and the, the feet. You see those pretty well on this bird. Yeah, the, the, the mask or the malar stripe there is much weaker than you generally would see on a, on a peregrine. There's variation, but there's much, probably much more variation with the peregrines. They can kind of have a full helmet versus streaks. And then these guys are, are pretty, pretty faint overall, but present.
So those, those are the four species you're, you're most likely to see. We're going to quickly go through um, a few other species just so that we cover the group. We might, we might as well. Um, uh, if you're lucky um, and people go and chase and drive very far to, to see the deer falcon, this is our, our next species. And you may notice that the distribution map here, um, this is taken from a Birds of North America account, an All About Birds website there that, that we've got linked below. But um, we don't have the sufficient eBird data to show that, you know, that nice range by season um, the, that we do for some of the other species. And, and part of that is, is that um, by trying to be um, a little bit secretive about where this really sought after species is, but I think part of the most of it is the fact that um, there aren't a whole lot of eBird observations of of deer falcons to have that that distribution to build the maps like we've been seeing for some of these other these other species. But uh, northern bird um, spills down into um, northern part of the U.S. in in winter in various places, um, and so you can kind of see where where you look for it. Uh, let's let's watch. Do we have a video of a deer falcon, Jesse? We do. I think this will be one that we'll want to go through twice and see if it'll smooth out a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah, we'll play it through once here. It's a dark, dark bird here in this case, dark helmet, pointed wings. Are those long or broad, or how would you compare those to our other two big falcons? I think they're they're broad. They're big and powerful. Everything on this bird is just just big. <laughs> we'll try to get a good freeze frame. It, it's just it's our biggest falcon. It's powerful. I think a lot of the the guides and the accounts will describe it as a football with wings. If you just look at that body, right? It's it's heavy. It gets really wide and broad, and and the, the chest there on either end. It's it's a robust bird. The wings, and we'll see this in the photo. The the tips are a little more blunt than peregrine, yeah. um, which which kind of feeds into the the wing being so broad. It's just this big. Again, a football with wings almost. Cool bird. We'll finish this this out. I don't know how choppy it is on your guys' end. It's it's a great bird to watch even even pixely. Okay. Oops. Go ahead. So here's the deer falcon still. Um, and you can see, uh, again, the broad wings. It doesn't have, and, and we should add that this is one of our probably most variable species. And they can, they can range from almost white to almost really dark, dark gray to brown, like you see here. Um, solid body, solid head, long tail. Blue, blue hue even here in this adult in terms of it's kind of different from the, the other two large falcons that we were talking about in terms of looking for that yellow, that yellow tone to the feet and uh, bill and tears. Here's another adult. So wing, wing tips are more blunt than the peregrine. Um, it's described as heavy chested, so just a big bulky chest um, and a long Tail, which is kind of tricky to tell from this image because it's spread. Um, but the overall feeling again for this bird is just just big, big and powerful. And notice the spotting on the chest again versus the juveniles that have more of this streaking. There's a juvenile with the streaking. And remember I pointed out um, on the undertail coverts of a juvenile peregrine that they were barred across. Tough to see in this picture from from Neil Paprocki, but you can see mm -hmm. that they're the undertail coverts. Let me get my pointer. Right in here, again, very tough to pick up in flight, but they're streaked versus kind of barred across. And that's if if you look at the Raptor ID app and specifically in the gray morph section, which is the majority of deer falcons are kind of the gray form. That's that's one of the characteristics that's pointed out. Anything else to add? No. 
All right. We're, we're rounding out our almost our time limit, so. No, we're doing pretty we good. Like... Two more species to cover here really quickly. And the, the next one is the Aplomato falcon. Uh, Appomattoes, you can see their their range is quite far south. So Texas is Texas and I guess New Mexico are the places to go in the states to see these birds. Um, much more prevalent as you go farther and farther south. Um, but yeah, you you can reliably see them in in Texas, especially where there's uh, reintroduction efforts. These birds are pretty unique among. And this this video is in slow mo, so it's a little off probably, but pretty pretty unique among the falcons that we've talked about. Extremely long tail, long long skinny wings, and the face facial patterns in in young birds all the way up to adults are are just pretty striking and unique. Boldly patterned. It's it's crazy how long wing long tail that falcon is compared to the other birds we've looked at. Yeah. Today. So just right there, like. You can already see, like, okay, for me, I, I've seen a few of these birds, and even still, just seeing this, it's like, wow, that's that's a unique looking bird right off the bat, seeing that face, um, and then that tail is just so long. Um, the the wing shape, of course, doesn't lie as far as getting it to falcon. So, you know, if you saw that just this much in a flash, you would you would probably have a pretty good feeling. Okay, that's it's a falcon. Now, where am I? in the world and and what other characteristics did i see yeah, long wings long tail i've got that bold facial marking but you you know that that's so different from the markings on a kestrel that 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 wouldn't be a likely mistake right? yeah, and you can speaking of the kestrel you can kind of just see some tail banding that's a good freeze frame right there um both adults and juveniles the band is a little bit different we'll have some images of each but um white white I think it's five, five to seven-ish tail bands on, on the tail, which is unlike anything we've talked about yet today. Let's finish out this video. So here's a perched image i don't i didn't have any good uh looks like it's cut off i didn't have any good flight images we have i think one after this but uh, again they're so striking and unique that i think a perched image gets a lot of what we need to get across just to, to help with the idea um distinct bold head pattern they've got bring the pointer up they've got this stripe again and then there's this white line behind the eye, which is unlike anything we've talked about. Um, multiple na narrow tail bands. This is from the underside, so maybe a little trickier to see, but very obvious. Super long tail, even, even in the perch profile, and then um, kind of this chestnut underside color. Chestnut pants with a, a dark vest on, kind of. Yeah, really, really fancy looking bird. Super, super nice. So this is from the Raptor ID app. Go ahead, Dave. So here's here's bird in flight. You can see some of the streaked breast and the, the tani below. Again, that, that barring on the tail that Jesse talked about. Long tail, long wings. Yeah, and that streaked breast, we're talking about this. Just pretty much a theme among all these juvenile versus adult uh, pair, uh, falcons. Streak breast there. We go back to this other one. No streakiness there. I think that kind of covers it. Yeah. Perfect. And then our last species amongst the the family Falconidae, which is actually not in Falco, but um, is Caracara, is the crested Caracara. And so you can see the distribution map uh, pretty broad spread through Central America up into to Texas, up north into Oklahoma some into Arizona, there's populations in Florida. And if you, you know, you go back through the um, species accounts and reports on both coasts, west coast and east coast on occasion, you'll get, you know, the, the stray caracara that will, will show up uh, in either place. These are boldly marked distinct birds that are, they're pretty, 
pretty recognizable in the, in the places where they, they see them. You see them on the ground or on posts like this a lot. Long legs, really prominent bill, black cap kind of crest that can be clean when it's down like that, but also look kind of shaggy too. Um, People often group these in with, with vultures. Lots of yeah. scavenging. Yeah. Um, lot, often in a group um, or a few of them flying around. And they're, I don't have a flight video here, but they're pretty unique looking. I mean, uh, we'll see some pictures in flight that will kind of set them apart. But just, yeah, if you if you see this, this profile, um, you can see it's pretty, pretty unique. Brian, we saw your message there that there was a car car in Massachusetts. Just last month. So that's pretty cool. Hopefully you got photos. All right, so here's here's a perched image, um, unmistakable. This is in Texas, out in the field, obviously, doing, doing what they kind of specialize at, being on the ground. Um, that flesh on the face is pretty unique. It can actually change color a little bit. I think it can become more yellow um if if they're like excited uh, however that's quantified excitement um what else here long long legs unfeathered pretty unique just the 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 black and white contrast in multiple parts of this bird just perched but also i think we'll see that in flight here second in a second right jesse yeah is is pretty distinct so again from the raptor id app uh, a juvenile which kind of sticking with the theme that we've had throughout these talks less uh, less colorful overall. This is kind of a more drab, unmarked bird. So kind of a brown overall plumage. Um, notice the face isn't as striking as the adult that's on the bottom with more of a black kind of plumage. Um, there's some minute differences too, too in the banding and whatnot throughout, but um, you can't really see that in these these particular images. Anything else you want to add? I think you know this is one of those those species that uh, I think once people once people see it and see it, you know what's really distinct here is kind of broad wings throughout and the fact that how far that head neck projects out ahead of the body and how long the tail is it just creates a shape that that's pretty unique and you see them flying. Yeah, and it's certainly worth pointing out the the white in the wings. Um, don't have an underside shot here, but. If you see this bird flying, even even with any Budio species or a raven, any anything really, or by itself, it's just pretty unique. There's not a lot out there that looks like this. And actually, in flight, they to me they don't look as, I guess, powerful if that's the right word, um, as a Budio species in flight. Look a little more like a raven. I'm not saying they fly like a raven, but the the power in flight of their wings just seems a little more floppy to me, but that's, again, I, I haven't seen thousands of, of care cars, but that's kind of my take on them. All right. So we're going to, we're going to wrap it up. We're going to go back to our four birds from our, our ID quiz um, before we went through these today. And I'm going to open the poll up, leave it open for about a minute or two. Um, see if you can answer these IDs now, if you couldn't before, and see if maybe if your your call has changed at all. Actually, that's the wrong question. Give me that's a second. The wrong question. They're not parrots. <laughs> I'm technically difficulties here, real quick. All right. I actually can't open this quiz back up. So maybe we'll give people just a second to think about it. I don't know why everybody, all but one are flying to the left for some reason. talk about those images real quick. I might try to pull the quiz up again. Sure. So in the first one, I see 
a falcon and i get to that because it's got these pointed wings um kind of tapering down tail is spread so it's a little tricky to tell what the tail looks like but i can see I should say what the tail looks like folded. I can see a little bit of banding, it looks like. It's pretty small on my screen. And it looks a little streaky on the breast. Um, looks like there are some sort of malar stripe that's dark. So that probably all those things combined would lead me away from some species. I won't give anything away. Number two, looks like a smaller bird again hard to get size from a single image it's like a little banding in the tail <clears throat> from the underside looks like the trailing edge let me get my pointer trailing edge looks like it has some some spots that you can see through so that string of pearls is probably kind of what we're seeing um breast looks pretty unmarked light bird looks like a couple Malars or a couple stripes on the head look, look present. You can see this bird, kind of an overall dark appearance, a little thicker wings <clears throat> than this last bird. Some banding in the tail. Again, that falcon, falcon like vibe with the shape. And this last one, a little distant. Could have been a better picture. You should be kinder to yourself, Jesse. So <laughs> we're, we, we've got technical polling difficulties, so I'm unable to open it up. Unfortunately. Well, we're through the last one. So um, the last one looks like the wing is up, so we can see some dark underneath, which is helpful. Looks like generally kind of an overall lighter vibe. The head, bottom of the head looks pretty light. Breast all the way down. Hard to see the tail, of course. Um, so we went through each of those. Now we can, we we'll probably all know what they are. Unfortunately, our poll's not working, but first one is a peregrine falcon. I won't rehash all these because I just talked about them. Unless there's anything you want to say, Dave. No, I think you did, you did a good job. Let's go through. Second one is a American kestrel. It's a male. And this one's kind of tricky again. It may be tricky to get to sex. Um, this is a distant image. Sorry, I'm like right up on my camera because I'm looking closely at my computer. Um, you can see the banding on the tail. And remember, we talked about those outer tail feathers, R6. They're the ones that are making the tail look banded like that. You can barely see a black subterminal band just because it's so distant, but there's some white band, white and black banding, and that comes from those two outer tail feathers we didn't really touch on what they look like so that's a little tricky and in the oops, got rid of my pointer and the striping on or the yeah the stripes on the head front and back of the eye there um pretty unique and then little, uh, you know string of pearls is kind of popping up particularly on that upper wing yeah this one's a merlin I think it speaks for itself. The tail banding, overall dark appearance, a little broader wings, um, stubbier than the, the kestrel. And the last one is a prairie falcon. You see those dark wing pits, overall light appearance. I think that covers it. Turn my pointer off. So sorry that the pole. Oh, the poll works now, but we just gave you all the answers. Oh, bummer. So for future reference, because I opened up the wrong question, the poll was still open, and you can't run more than one poll at a time. So ah. thanks for bearing with us while, while we learn something about the system. Bummer. Okay. All right, that brings us to the end. We stuck, I guess, for a little over time again, about the same last time. Um, this is Falcon ID. Hopefully you learned something today. On Friday, we're going to talk about the raptor medley. So eagles, vultures, and other birds, uh, other raptors that we haven't talked about yet. So tune into that if, if you want. We'd love to have you. And then next week, we'll do a site check-in with hopefully Corpus Christi and the Grand Canyon. Anything to add there, Dave? No, hopefully the technology will work. We're, we're going to test it out this week. 
uh, and if and and we should be able to, to either get a live look in or we'll get some recorded footage if if that doesn't work. Uh, and then kind of also maybe a Q and A and sort of a wrap up on the the whole um, the whole series of of, of seminars. Um, yeah. We'll see what we do then. But thanks for thanks for tuning in with us. Uh, hope you enjoyed it, like Jesse said, and and have a good rest of your your Tuesday, and hopefully we'll see you on Friday.